Hey everyone, my name is Troy and welcome to Facility D20. It's 2021 and we've got a brand new any cubic photon that we're going to unbox, set up and take you through the first prints. So this thing came a long way before it got to me. I live way up north here, so I'm interested to see if this thing arrives in good condition. It's always a worry when you ship so far. But from the time I ordered to the time I got it, it only took 12 days. And this thing cost me only 169 US. It was a super, super sale, so I just couldn't pass it up. Got some instruction booklets, QC pass, sales service card, got USB flash drive, 8 gigs, power block, Allen wrench, power cable. Some gloves, some Allen keys, and some tools. So, it's packaged nice and tightly. So, we should have a bunch of stuff in here. Now, you want to be careful when you're taking this out so you don't uh, break anything or drop anything. Here we have the build plate. Bunch of styrofoam packing material, which is uh, really jammed in here. There we go. We have LCD screen. We have the vat. Screw it on tight. Looks like we got some filters, copy filter style. And here it is, and we got to put a little handle on here and take off some of these plastic protectors. So one of the nice things about the Anycubic Photon, this first version, is that it's got this nice solid frame, which is real nice. Now, while they have a few new versions of this out, just can't beat the price right now so I'm planning on printing a vent capture here on my FDM printer and exhausting this straight outside you're gonna to want to take your M8 screw and your little handle and screw this on first next up we're going to connect the power connect the power cord to the anticubic photon which is right on the back here and plug it in We've got the build plate here. You want to take the plastic protecting off. Take the Allen key. Loosen it up so it wiggles freely here. Loosen up the reservoir. Gently slide it out. Now you're going to want to remove the protective film. The LCD screen carefully. and attach the build plate. Then tighten it down. Next up, get a half a sheet of A4 piece of paper, slip it under the build plate, and then go to tools, move Z, Hit the home button. Now we're going to move it down to the Z axis is calibrated. So what we want to do is hit 0.1 millimeter and then hit the down arrow. So we're going to keep going down a little bit at a time until we start to get resistance. And what we want is to be able to pull it forward but not be able to push it backwards. So here we go, we got it. Now the next thing we want to do is to make sure this is aligned and sitting evenly with the LCD screen. 
piece of paper align this evenly once that's done we're going to tighten it down nice and tight now we need to go back and click z equals zero hit enter setting okay Next, we're going to go back to move to Z. And we're going to move by 10 millimeters. And we're going to move it up to about 120 millimeters, so about 12 clicks. And we're going to go back under Tools. We'll click Detection. We'll select the image. First one. Testing time, and then click next. And you can see the image displayed. We're going to hit back and detection. We're going to detect the square. We're going to hit back, detection, and we're going to hit the big rectangle. everything looks good next we're going to check the vat and we're just going to make sure that these screws are securely tightened down that one was a little tiny bit loose you don't want to over tighten these you just want to make sure they're snug then we're going to install it Gently install it. Well, it stops, and then we're going to tighten down these set screws. There we go. Next up, we got to do a test print. So the next thing we're going to do is take some resin. I have the Elegoo water soluble resin. And we're going to fill the vat up to about one third capacity. Make sure this is shaken up a little before you put it in. It's recommended that you wear a mask and gloves for this and try to avoid spilling or wasting this. We're going to close the unit, take the USB flash drive that comes with it, as there is a calibration print in here. Print. This file I was expecting the cube, but it says RERF.PWS. So this is the test file that came on it, so we're going to go ahead and print this. Play. And we can see what we're dealing with. So we're going to go ahead and let that print. And we're going to take a look at some of the statistics of this machine versus the others. And we're going to go ahead and put it in this wash and cure after and take a look at the part. So comparing the newer Photon S with the original, you can see they're very similar. Both are great buys. Uh, the technology is the same, SLA. The light source of the Photon S is a little bit better. The print speed is the same. The Z-axis construction is a single rod on a Photon. Photon S has a dual, so it's a little upgrade there. Build volumes are practically the same. Layer thickness, the XY DPI is the same. The anti-aliasing uh, is not available on the Photon, but it is on the Photon S. Not a huge thing. Supported materials are the same. So you can't really go wrong with either one. You can see that my um, exposure test prints came out perfectly fine. No issue, and there's also a wash and cure unboxing setup video on my channel. I'm going to link it here, as well as another video comparing FDM prints to resin. I'm going to link it here as well.